Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship in the back mountains of Northeast Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Lauren. I'm glad to see those who came out on this holy Thursday evening to worship our Lord and our God. I am. Are there any announcements? I'd just like to draw your attention to our Holy Week services. Uh, the church will be open tomorrow afternoon from noon until 3 for anybody that wants to come in and spend some time in prayer. And at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we're going to meet at the beauty spot down by the mercantile. Um, bring your walking shoes. We're going to do a walk like Jesus would have done on his last day. And we're going from that beauty spot up here to the church. We will end in the basement of the church. I don't think it's supposed to rain, but bring in, um, people are shaking their heads. I was gonna say, bring an umbrella if you think it is. And then tomorrow evening at seven o'clock, we're having a combined worship service with the other United Methodist Churches of the Back Mountain, and that's at Shavertown United Methodist Church. And Sunrise will be here at 6.30 with our regular service at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Any others? Then let's prepare our hearts for worship. Christ be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Christ, Christ is prepared a feast of love. Let us pray. Holy God, source Christ of all love, love, on, on the, the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he had loved them. We pray that you, by your Holy Spirit, would write this commandment in our hearts. Help us serve as Jesus served, to not be afraid to offer ourselves for the sake of others. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast, number 616. Thank you. 
My sisters and brothers, Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in the truth of God's spirit. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we, we your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips, and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit, Make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray and confess silently to God. <clears throat> to condemn only Christ but Christ suffered and died for us was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us and continues to intercede for us believe the good news in the name of Jesus Christ you are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ you are forgiven glory to God Amen. Amen. I invite you to give Audrey your attention as she reads our scripture this evening. The readings are from Matthew 26. We have three readings. The first is from verses 14 to 25. Jesus agrees to betray Jesus. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over the Last Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to one, to one after the other, Surely you don't need me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will be just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him to have not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. And from verses 26 through 30, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And from verses 47 to 56, 
Jesus arrested. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the glory of Padre. <laughs> on the last meal that you ate with your friends. Lord, this evening, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be present, flowing in and around and through us, enlightening us, giving us new insight to this familiar story, warming our hearts once again as we think about the great love that you have for us. We ask this and pray it in Christ's name. Amen. When I was pregnant with our oldest son, I was a relative newlywed with my sailor husband living all the way out and across the country in the great state of Washington. I was acquainted with another relatively newlywed Navy wife. By this time, she was just a year out of high school and her husband was on the same ship as Brian was. Her older sister was also a relative newlywed and pregnant as well. So the two sisters had each other to commiserate with, to share stories with. As a local gal, the younger sister was, not only had her family there to support her, to visit and socialize with, she still had all of her teenage high school friends to hang out with and keep her company while her sailor husband was out to sea for months at a time. Can you see where this might be going? Eventually, the ship came back and husbands and wives were reunited, babies were born healthy, and relationship troubles began for this new young family. The sailor and his wife decided that they should divorce, and the Navy wife's older sister counseled the sailor 
and said that he might want to have the paternity of the baby girl tested because the sister wasn't sure that he was the father. This act of betrayal really bothered me. And the allegations of adultery bothered me too against the young woman, but it didn't surprise me. What bothered me more was what I considered a betrayal of her sister. You see, I was raised in a family where we stuck together for good or for bad. My brother and I, I've already confessed, would fight like cats and dogs sometimes growing up. But when the chips were down, we knew we could count on each other. And we still can count on each other. So to have sister turn against sister really, really bothered me. I had difficulty comprehending how the older one could do this to the younger one, even if the younger woman had cheated. To me, it was a betrayal of the family from the inside. Have any of you ever experienced something like that? Betrayal by someone who you considered family? It's heartbreaking, isn't it? Someone whom you trusted, you counted on, you would depend on, you hoped in, let you down. What did you do about it? Did you forgive and forget? At first, that would be tremendously hard. Did you cut all ties? Did you seek revenge? This evening, as we reflect on Christ's last night among us, we're going to hear the story of a man who was there at the Last Supper, a man whose name has become synonymous with betrayal. What you hear <clears throat> might surprise you. I give you Judas Iscariot. Hey, we were the Israelites, God's chosen people. The promised land is ours because God promised it to our blessed father Abraham and his descendants. Yet, we walked around with our heads bowed and with our beards wagging in shame. In actuality, we were nothing but slaves for the Roman dogs, our current owner. I was tired of being treated like an outcast in my own country and having to bow to an emperor who worshiped stars in the heaven and creatures from the deep, things that were created by the same God who created humankind in his own image. Like other Jews, I kept looking for the promised Messiah, the one who would free us from slavery and make our nation great again, the Christ. Each time I heard someone cry, it's the Messiah, I would follow on the edge of the crowd until I could get a sense of the fellow's nature. I was eager to join a revolution, but smart enough that I did not want to get caught on the losing side. This Jesus, son of a carpenter, was different. I wasn't really going to listen to him. After all, he was from Nazareth, and everyone knows that nothing good comes from Nazareth. But I couldn't seem to stop myself, and before I knew it, I was on the inner circle. I was on the edge of the crowd, then I was on the inner circle, then I was back, then I was fourth. I was one of the twelve, as we were called, and trusted to care for our money. For three years I followed him all through Judea and Galilee, 
and even into Samaria, back and forth to Jerusalem. I thought that maybe this Jesus was the Messiah, the one who would liberate us from the Romans and be our new king, a king like David. And maybe, maybe I would have a royal appointment, a reward for my faithfulness in this new kingdom that he talked about so much. Talk? Blah! That's all he did. After almost three years of his talk, I began to feel like I had wasted my time. But Jesus had so many followers. What if he could be a martyr for the cause of freedom? Not only was I cunning enough to use community property for myself, but I had honed a certain set of skills that kind of matched my name. Some thought my name Iscariot simply meant from Keroth in southern Judea. However, in the vulgar language of the Romans, it was derived from Sicarius, meaning dagger man. And so I began looking for a time and a place. During the Passover feast in Jerusalem was shaping up to be a good time. Jesus had ridden into the city to welcome the king on the back of a donkey. The crowds had even chanted, Hosanna to the son of David. Save us, son of David. They were right for a revolution, a revolt against the detested Romans. I watched and I waited. All of a sudden, an opportunity presented itself in the most unexpected and rewarding way. One night, a woman wasted her money pouring very expensive perfume over Jesus and when we complained about her wantonness, Jesus commended her for her good deed, even declaring, truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of me. I was so fed up and jealous that I stormed out of the dinner and in the streets ran into the chief priest of the temple. The priests and scribes were very disgruntled and threatened by Jesus and were looking for an opportunity to discredit or destroy his, his work. We came to an agreement where we could kind of help each other. They would, this would rid their threat to their own little empire and I would have a martyr for my cause and 30 pieces of silver to line my pocket. Wow, the night of the Passover meal was a strange night. I was there. I didn't quite feel like myself. It was almost as if someone had taken over my body and I was watching everything from a distance. Jesus did some different and radical things. He washed our feet. A slave's job. Then he fed each of us with bread, dipped in a common cup, saying something about his body and his blood. Not only that, but he talked to all of us about betrayal, saying that one of us who had dipped bread with him, would betray him. I almost panicked. How could he know? He couldn't, could he? Besides, he had betrayed me first. He wasn't going to free us from the Romans. He wasn't the Messiah I thought he was. He was all talk and no action. When I finally got up enough nerve to ask him, he just said, do quickly what you are going to do. 
Offering Jesus the kiss of peace wasn't a big deal to me. I had distanced myself from him. Handing him over to the chief priests and temple guard wasn't a problem either. It was almost as if someone else were doing it. Their words were coming out of my mouth. It was their hands on Jesus' arms, not mine. When I heard that the crowds had turned on Jesus and they were seeking his blood and wanted his death, then I began to think, I began to doubt. This was not how the revolution should be. Jesus wasn't strong enough for this faith. He was an innocent man. Innocent blood was about to be shed. And for what? What had I done? As I came back to my senses, I tried to return the blood money that the chief priest paid me, but they wouldn't take it. They were too busy celebrating their triumph. They would not even hear my cry of repentance and offered me, and offered me no atonement. I went to a tree in a nearby field, pleading to God for forgiveness. The last thing that I saw was the face of a man, the Messiah, about to be crucified. Although Judas felt justified in handing Jesus over to the chief priest because he felt betrayed by Jesus, Judas was filled with remorse for his actions and desperately tried to repay the money, the price of a slave, to no avail. He died a tragic and sorrowful death, not realizing that he had had a role to play in the salvation of humanity, not understanding what would happen three days later. Although betrayed by one of his own, brokenhearted at the actions of Judas, Jesus went willingly and knowingly to his crucifixion in order that we, Judas and the rest of the disciples, and you and me here tonight might be reconciled to God. When we gather for the Lord's Supper in a very little bit, I invite you to think of those who have betrayed you, who have hurt you, and then consider how Jesus responded to betrayal and the words that he spoke as he hung from the cross, bloody beaten, weary. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Let us pray. Father, forgive us, for we betray you every time we sin, every time we turn our backs upon you and chase after something besides you. Help us to forgive others with the same depth of mercy and grace that you have shown us. As we share in this gift of Holy Communion, Jesus' Last Supper, cleanse us that we might live lives worthy of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross on our behalf. In the name of our Savior Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 I invite you to turn in your hymnals to pages 15 and 16.
tonight since there are not that many of us for communion when we have it um i'll ask you the choir to sing first and then we can all gather together in a horseshoe here in the church and we can all receive communion together then so at this time i'd like to invite the choir to sing i know it's a little out of order i apologize <laughs> Give thanks 
thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth, you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, when we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, even those of Judas, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took a loaf of bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and then gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray boldly the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil for, for that is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power, and the and glory, glory forever. forever amen, amen. <clears throat> i will have the basket with the single serves on the stool for anybody who would like to help themselves to that I invite you to come and form a horseshoe down the aisle, across the front, and up this other aisle. And I will bring you communion. For those online, it'll be kept looking at the uh, altar.
blood of Christ and the cup of salvation given for us. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself up for us. Grant that we might be renewed in our spirits this evening and go forth in the grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ now and always. Amen. Amen. I invite you to make your way to your seats as we prepare for our closing hymns and stripping of the altar this evening. <laughs> After we have our reading and the extinguishing of the candles, we will move into the stripping of the altar. As the hymns are played, we'll be doing the first two verses of O Love Divine, What Hast Thou Done, and moving into Were You There, until the altar is stripped. If you would like to help, I invite you to come forward and I will hand you items from the altar that you may take to the table and all the way in the back of the sanctuary. And just as a reminder, there is no benediction to end our service this evening as the service continues on into Easter Sunday. It's the first in a series. And as the altar is the items from the altar are removed, we are reminded of Christ being laid into the tomb and we depart in silence, thinking of the sacrifice Christ made on our behalf. Kim. Never doubt the meaning of Lent. It happened a long time ago. But it happened. Jesus walked on this earth. He practiced a ministry of radical inclusivity, drawing to himself all the despised and rejected members of society. He lived what he taught, a life of justice and love, of profound compassion for all people. He lived a life acceptable to you, O oh God, his death terrifies us because it reveals how committed the world is to its own way and the price the world exacts from those whose commitment is to you. we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of all the children in the world who suffer in body, in mind, or in spirit. Let us pray. What we contemplate, contemplate this, this night, night is beyond, beyond words, beyond understanding. May, May the Holy Spirit intercede for us and give voice to what, for us, us is inexpressible. inexpressible. Amen. Let us unite our voices in song.